Hi everyone, my name is Roman Häuser and first of all I want to send out a big big thank you to all of you for all your comments, your feedback, your likes uh, and your follows on my YouTube channel because I would have never expected such an amount of feedback to either my original tracks or my Terranigma covers so uh, your feedback is was really what's really pushing me to go on producing uh, that kind of music and was really motivating for me so yeah keep on doing this it's it's really really awesome for me and I totally appreciate it um, and as a little like digital thank you from my side I thought it could be a good idea to um, try something out today and to set up a little walkthrough uh, through one of my pieces uh, through one of my th through, through a piece that is not yet uh, released it will be in two or three days um, but yeah it's like a little sneak peek for you it's another Terranigma cover song and um, yeah, any one of you who knows the Terranigma soundtrack will know this piece, I guess, uh, of course, uh, definitely. So, yes, um, we're gonna walk through the piece, we're gonna go through all of the tracks I set up for this piece, um, because I received a lot, a lot of mails and um, requests from some of you, uh, yeah, regarding the question how I approach my my producing my composing, which kind of products I use, uh, which DAW I use, how I structure my template and so on. So yeah, I thought it would be a good idea to show you a bit of my approach on composing music and on producing music. So that's what we are going to do <laughs> in this little video. Um, I never did a video like this before, so it's a, it's a first experiment. Um, Feel free to let me know if you like this one or if you're interested into uh, more videos like this. Um, yeah, I guess enough talking, let's dive into the video, let's dive into the walkthrough and have fun and let me know whether you like this one or not. <laughs> Thanks. All right, so here we are. Welcome to my little uh, project file here for my recent uh, Terranigma cover track. It's the track, as I already said, Open the Door. Um, I think it's a quite famous track of the original of the Terranigma soundtrack. And uh, yeah, this was the one I really had a lot of fun working on because I love the original track and I wanted to, to keep the, the main melody of it right in the center of the piece and just build a like cinematic sounding piece around it. So uh, that was my approach on this one. And yeah, as you can see, I got all my um, instrument tracks listed here on the left side of my logic window. Um, it starts with the brass here and then comes the strings and uh, some woodwind tracks, some additional tracks, and then there are a lot of um, effects and percussion tracks that are following. Um, we will go through the main instrument sections, I would say, uh, and I tell you a bit of a, a bit about the libraries and um, which kind of products I, I use and why I use them and why why I like the the libraries I use for this patch or what I like about them. So, um, as you can see, uh, the piece doesn't start with a brass, <laughs> although it's uh, on top here. Um, the piece starts uh, with some strings patches that you see here. Um, I won't show you the whole piece yet because as I already said in my little introduction, um, this one's not finished yet. Well, it's nearly finished, but it's not completely like polished yet. Um, but it will be released in around two or three days. And um, so you will be able to listen to the full track soon. Um, but I at least will give you a little sneak peek of the piece, so uh, here's how it sounds at the moment.
little cliffhanger here. But as I already said, you will be listen to, uh, you will be able to listen to the whole track soon. Um, so let's start uh, walking through the track and um, yeah, just taking a look at the different libraries I used and the different instruments that are used in this track. Um, starting with one of the main instrument parts here, um, we can just take a look into the brass. For this piece, I use the Adventure Brass by Musical Sampling. Um, it's a really, really organic sounding library. Um, it sounds absolutely natural and has a wonderful cinematic flavor to it. Um, the playability is, is amazing. You can just play out, play in um, via your master keyboard um, lines that are alternating between short notes, sustained notes, and um, it immediately sounds natural. And you don't have to do too much editing uh, after you played everything in. So that's this is what I really like about the library. Same as for um, Caspian Brass by Performance Samples that I'm uh, from time to time uh, mixing a bit into uh, the Adventure Brass patch because I think that they are really, really good in uh, supporting each other and to give a bit more, yeah, a bit bigger and, and roomier sound to the to the brass sound. And this is why I like the combinations of these two patches really much. So um, here, for example, we got the, the French horns by um, Adventure Brass playing, um, supporting long notes and sounding just wonderful together with the trombones nothing too special regarding um, the actual actual composing or the notes that are that they are playing but um, it's just a thought to support the, the main the popular main melody of this piece so um, I really really like this and I like how you can um, draw like um, dynamic, yeah, dynamic f uh, bows here uh, with the, with a mod wheel um, to give it an, an even more natural sound. Um, yeah, presenting how the horn player, for example, um, uses his breath to control the strength of the sound, and and this is what I really like and what really comes out of this library. I I love the overall sound. Um, if we listen to yeah, the short notes too. Maybe we listen to the whole brass ensemble. Um, as you can see here, these are all my um, different single instrument tracks, like the French horns, French horn staccato, trombones, tuba, and so on. Um, but I route them into uh, different group tracks. You can see it in the mixer here. If we open this up, um, here are different group tracks, not for every uh, instrument group, but for most of them and so if we just solo out the the brass track for example we can listen to the to the whole brass section playing staccatos here or listening to the long notes they're playing Wonderful, strong, and and expressive brass sound. So I really, really like the the sound of um, Adventure Brass. Um, as you can see here, this reads a bit different than uh, the Adventure Brass patches, but it's also uh, a brass track. Yeah, because this is something I use as a little support. I really like to um, mix ensemble patches from other libraries that are uh, produced very well or that are recorded in a in a nice room um, I like to, to uh, mix them to the main tracks and this is why I uh, put a little bit of the orchestral essentials brass section by by project Sam because they were recorded in a really, really wonderful and beautifully sounding room and it's um, yeah it's just it's just a really nice support for the main tracks uh, if you you see here on the volume it's quite it's turned quite low but it's just a little bit of difference but um, you can hear it when you concentrate on the room and on the on the yeah just on the mood of the of the brass sound so soloed out it sounds like this it's not 
like that right into your face sound that um, other brass libraries have because I also turned up the reverb a bit with this one, but together with the with the um, with the other staccato patches. Um, it really has the feeling of a of a nice concert hall. You're sitting in a in a hall listening to this music, and this is what I like about using supportive um, patches from other libraries to yeah to tweak the sound just a bit. Uh, same with the sustain patch, like here. This is the sustain patch of the um, brass ensemble from Orchestral Essentials, using just for the low notes. And they are just only supporting the tuba, for example, here. Putting together with the trombones. And you hear how the sound fades out like in a big, big hall. And yeah, I like this kind of sound. So um, this is why I like to mix up. Um, to, to mix different uh, patches and different products, for example. Yeah, next up are the strings. Um, yeah, another product by uh, Musical Sampling. I use the Adventure strings and the Soaring strings. And um, as you can see here, I like to mix solo strings to uh, legato ensemble strings. So. These are many, many <laughs> um, terms that you might not know yet if you're a beginner with all of the, all of this. So um, you can, or it can be ex explained like this. So we have long notes played by the soaring strings here. And we have short notes played by the adventure strings by musical sampling sounding like this. And for this long part here, for the part of the long uh, notes played by the violins, okay. <laughs> it's already a really beautiful sound. I like the lyrical sound of musical uh, sampling uh, soaring strings product. Um, but nevertheless, I love to mix it with a bit of a solo violin to give it more character and to bring out different melodies a bit more. And um, I really love the sound of uh, Sinistring's solo brought out by Sinus samples. And if you listen to them together, you maybe notice a little difference. So first of all, the soaring string lines on its own. And now with the solo string, Uh, solo violin, I'm sorry. And it's more like, yeah, you can you can grab the tone, you can hear the 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 strings, and you can hear the 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 player playing the the, the melody and the and the musical lines here. And this is what I like about combining solo instruments, uh, especially for strings and for violins, uh, with ensemble patches. And this is what I used here. Um, as I already said, I used the adventure strings by musical sampling for the short notes. Um, for example, here are the violas playing together uh, with the violins uh, some staccato notes. And the, the staccato patches of um, of the adventure strings product they are really snappy i like the I, I really like the sound you can hear the bow on the on the on the strings and you can it sounds so it sounds really natural so this is what i like about the sound and why i use it in nearly all of my tracks um, again not without mixing a bit of ensemble tracks to it um, or ensemble patches um, like the Adagio uh, ensemble staccatos from from ADO, 
um, on their own, they sound like this. A quite special sound uh, on their own, but mixed together with the uh, staccato patches from, from Adventure Strings in that case. Um, you can hear how they support getting, like in the brass section, getting that um, feeling of, yeah, you're actually in a concert hall. So listen to this. So in addition to the celli, for example, or to the violas, it's a, yeah, it's, it's just a, a very, very nice, special uh, little effect that it brings to the, to the overall string sound. So this is what I really love about these, about this technique of, uh, as you call it, layering. So we had soaring strings for the long lines, for the sustained uh, string lines. We have adventure str strings for the staccatos and for all the short string stuff, or the string stuff that are short notes being played. Um, we have, of course, some uh, supportive things like string runs to, yeah, to give it just a little, um, a little interesting twist while, while coming from one part of the song to another, yeah, like you said, and to build up some, I'm sorry, a bit quirky today. <laughs> Maybe it's a bit much for my, uh, for my Mac here to, to do the screen recording and playing back all these tracks. So maybe it happens one or more times. Um, where did I stop? Yeah, talking about the runs patches, like I'm combining strings uh, and woodwinds here to yeah, do a little tension building with, um, with these runs patches. You can hear them, for example, here. <laughs> Yeah, these are these are patches by uh, Cine Samples again, called uh, Hollywood Orchestral Hollywood Winds Runs, I guess. Yeah, Hollywood Winds, and the um, orchestral strings, the the Cine strings runs by Cine Samples. So on their own, they sound like this. Are a nice tool to to get from one part of the piece to another, or to yeah, just to build up some tension and to set up some some climaxes, for example. I really like this. Um, yeah, we got piano, for example. I'm uh, usually using products like the Emotional Piano by Sound Iron. I really like this um, the sound. The it's a bit more. It's a bit more uh, like, let's say, melancholic and, and a bit darker than um, many of the other piano libraries out there. So, um, but I'm starting to get into some of the uh, Native Instruments complete uh, pianos, like the um, the Gentleman and the Maverick, I guess are they're called. So I'm I'm testing this out at the moment, um, using a bit of harp here, of course, too. Um, this one's by Orchestral Essentials. Uh, this one's by, by Project Sam from the Orchestral Essentials Library. Um, really like this uh, this harp. Yeah, and then we come uh, to the to the big big effect and synthesizer section here. So um, these are things I used for the first time uh, from a new contact library that comes with contact sec six, I guess. Um, called hybrid keys sounding like this and really giving that yeah like ethereal and and um, airy feeling to the to the main melody that it has in, a, in the original version too so you got a f feeling of uh, traveling through space or something, and this is what they, um, this is the feeling that that they that these patches support or shall support. Um, have some some belts here, some synthesizer belts, and it all adds up to a to an overall airy and uh, f yeah, mystic like like 
nearly mystical sound that you have in this part here. All right, so I had to do a little cut here because my <laughs> my Mac freezed a bit and um, I had to unload some patches and reload them again because of some uh, freezes in my in my template here. But I think it should work now. So uh, we stopped, I guess, with the uh, hybrid keys here that I showed you and the and the key belts. Um, they're coming from a native instruments uh, product that I'm. Not using that often because I didn't get into it too much uh, right now. Um, I just bought or, or upgraded to complete um, some some days ago, and yeah, I didn't have the time yet to check out <laughs> all of the products that come with complete. But um, somehow I stumbled upon this pa uh, key belts patch of the Prism uh, synthesizer, and I really loved it for for this piece. So I directly used it um, after. After these keyboard-like sounds, we come to, to the percussion uh, field. And um, yeah, something that I almost use in every track are the symbols of um, Albion 1. The, the percussion section of Albion 1 is quite cool. And um, I really, really like to use the, the symbols because I love the sound. So um, if you just listen to it here. You might say, well, just symbols here, but, <laughs> but it's not that easy to find a symbols patch that really delivers the sound you're looking for because, um, yeah, manufacturers of uh, sample libraries do these symbols and percussion recordings on very different ways. And I just for myself found out that um, in these high pitched sections like symbols and stuff, I like the approach of, of Spitfire for, uh, for Albion and other libraries. So this is what, why I use them for the symbols in nearly all of my tracks. Um, I have some effects patch like the kinetic metal boat symbols, uh, also by Native Instruments here. Um, I still use some uh, patches from Orchestral Essentials by, by Project Sam uh, for the percussion section. Like I really like some of their uh, percussion effects like this one here like the big drum or the orchestral bass drum um, that I also use in this patch, in this piece. So um, yeah, it's just, as you see, it's a mix mixture of, um, yeah, a big variety of libraries that I, that I like and that I use. Um, and it adds up over the time. So you're buying new stuff and you, you recognize, oh, I like this patch more than the other one. And then you start combining all these libraries and this is how um, projects like this one, um, yeah, get created. Um, some usual suspects, I would say, for um, orchestral percussion, like the Glockenspiel and the uh, timpani, everything by Orchestral Essentials. Really like the t uh, timpani patch of Orchestral Essentials. So for all beginners, that maybe look into this video, I can really um, recommend getting Orchestral Essentials by Project Sam as the first or one of the first libraries you buy because um, yeah, it's mostly ensemble patches. There are not many solo instruments included and there are not many like in dedicated uh, strings libraries, not many legato patches or something, but for the just for the start and to get used to how to handle um, sample libraries and how to handle ensemble recordings, how to yeah, get the sound you want. This package is a really, really good one. They brought out Orchestral Essentials 2 a while ago. Um, didn't check, uh, I didn't check this one yet, but I will definitely in the future. So um, if you're considering yeah, which library I should get for uh, starting to dive into cinematic music, this would be one good choice, I would say. Getting to big cinematic drums here. <laughs> um, I'm combining different patches and I um, use different libraries for different tracks. 
So in this case, I chose a combination of um, an Epic Tom's patch by ADO. I, I really like the yeah the roomy and uh, and quite quite big sound of the Epic Tom's ensemble that uh, ADO recorded. Sounds like this. Yeah, trailer music, cinematic music. You immediately get inspired to write a trailer track while listening to these epic toms. Um, another one of my first libraries I bought when I started back in 2014, I guess, um, are the Apocalypse Percussion Ensemble by um, Sound Iron, and I use them till today. And I will use them for future tracks too, I guess. Um, I use the uh, bass, drums and toms patch in a big, big number of my tracks. So just like the sound and um, just like how you can combine this patch with, with other percussion libraries. So listen to this. Yeah, just very, very flexible sound. Um, very big sounding too, of course, very cinematic or trailer music-like sound, but uh, you can combine it with a lot of other genres and, and uh, libraries, so very flexible. A bit of the ensemble drums by Des uh, Decimator by, I guess, Audio Imperia. Um, another trailer library, um, but a, a very, very good library to give your percussion tracks <coughs> I'm sorry uh, to give your percussion tracks a bit more a bit more boom and a bit more power because the sound is really really powerful you can listen to this here for example it's quite simple um, beat but together with all of these of these three um, big drums patch I, I would call them the overall sound is is really really good and really appropriate for something you would listen to in a soundtrack for example and you see how um, adding up these different libraries give these different drum sounds um, a very personal touch so you can combine it with whatever library you want to use and you can find your own style by by doing this um, i mean sure these big drums are used uh, are used over and over a lot that's sure and um but i guess this approach is uh, something to yeah to at least diversify the sound a bit more so it's quite cool to do this and it really uh, brings something something fresh to to a, to a track if you uh, consider how to yeah how to combine certain libraries with other ones so yeah good effect for for new sounds for example uh, then we're coming to some more synthesizers that are just like building a a bass and a supporting uh, soundscape for the piece i'm using a lot of zebra here by um you you he yeah you, he. Um, and i'm using um other libraries as well so this is for for example from the dark uh, zebra or zebra Hans Zimmer version um a deep bass patch and um, we have some high rhythm rhythms here we have al patches from albion 4 for example that are just synthesized um patches so again it's a combination of very different things so um, putting this together we can listen to for example these patches uh, these patches here
nothing special, but it adds up to the overall sound and um, yeah, it gives you that special that special feeling that this piece needs. Okay, um, something you might as well be interested in is my um, approach to <laughs> compose for choirs. Um, I'm alternating between different choir libraries in my uh, in my pieces. For this one, I use the Storm Choir by um, Stresov Sampling, um, and yeah, it's the first version of the Storm Choir, I think. And yeah, it's just a supporting patch in this piece, but it adds, um, of course, a very epic uh, feeling to it. So if you listen to this. Um, love the sound. I love how you can he really hear the singers um, Sp uh, singing out their syllables and um, how you also hear the room where it uh, was recorded so uh, that's what I li like about this library and I like how it um, combines with an overall orchestral piece like this so you can really make it out in the mix and this is what is what's quite important for choir libraries so if you use them and you don't hear them in the mix uh, or you have to do too much e tweaking regarding the equalizer for example um, yeah, it, it, was, it would be quite sad regarding the choir. So I like that this one comes out quite well in the mix and, um, and with a very natural sound, so. <laughs> what you can see down here are all a uh, single uh, effect files like booms or uh, like you call them in the trailer field whoosh banks so things that are building up tension and then have an impact or something following to yeah to set the set the stage for a new part of the track yeah you can hear deep booms something like something like this here kicks bass sounds um, reversed effects and so on, risers, something like this to build up tension. And I like to work with them on a file-based um, approach because I, I then uh, can, uh, yeah, I'm very flexible to move them around in my uh, project template and move them to where I need them. And I like to work with them on a um, file-based approach like you can see here it's not i i don't use the the contact patches to work with booms and whoosh bangs. i use the samples put them into my project file and then i can move them around like i want to and i can um yeah tweak the volume tweak them with effects and and so on so this is what i what i like about working with files here yeah and this is my my little my first little walkthrough through one of my pieces this one will be, as I already said, released in two or three days, so you will be able to listen to the complete track then. Um, I'm really looking forward to your feedback, so uh, feel free to tell me whether you're interested in or interested in more of uh, more videos like this. Um, whether that this one helps you to understand how I'm approaching uh, to set up pieces like this and. Yeah, just leave me a comment if you want to see something other, depending my music or my other products I, I use, or if you have certain questions um, on how to compose tracks in the cinematic field, how to set up project templates, and so on. Uh, what I didn't mention in this walkthrough yet were all the little mixing uh, elements here, like the EQs and stuff. I can do this in another video if you like to. Um, I'm not I'm absolutely not an expert in mixing this is one of my <laughs> toughest tasks till now so um, I do all this by ear and just tweak around till I think yeah this sounds quite okay um, but there are people out there that are much much better in mixing and in the like production part of all this so I'm 
it's okay to s uh, I'm okay in setting up uh, these instrument parts here and in composing playing in these uh, lines but I guess I suck at mixing so <laughs> don't pro I, I won't promise you too much but we can of course look into which uh, products I use here for EQ for example um, how I EQ my instruments and so on but I don't want to make this video too long so thank you very very much for your attention i hope this helped you a bit or uh, this answered some of your questions you had um, thanks again for your amazing feedback on my music um, it really really pushes me to go on and um, yeah see you maybe in the next video or at least in the next track i will upload so thanks again for your attention and yeah have a nice nice weekend bye bye My name is Roman Häuser and uh, first of all I want to thank all of you for all your comments, your feedback, your 